Hey, yo, what's good? It's your boy, Derek Branch here at SportsView360.com. I just want to talk about what was being reported for today's uh, first session of Saints uh, OTAs. It wasn't mandatory. It's voluntarily. And um, as usual, there's players that are not there. And there's been some people to kind of like, you know, making a big deal of certain players not being in attendance because you're installing um, a new offense, and one player that, you know, a lot of people felt as though, certain people felt as though should have been there was Alvin Kamara. He was not present at today's um, session. Uh, also, was the players that weren't present were Ryan Ramchek, Tano Capasio, Marshall Lattimore, Chase Young, to name a few. Uh, I think Netflix as well wasn't there, but a lot of those guys are trying to recover back from injuries. You know, Chase um, Young, I get it. Um, to no Capacio, it is what it is. I really, I really don't make a big, really, I don't really don't make a big deal out of being in attendance, a players um, not being in, in attendance for voluntary OTAs because it's not mandatory. You know, it's not mandatory. You're not gonna get danged for it. Um, that doesn't mean just because you're not there. That don't mean that there's issues going on in house. There's no in house fighting. You know, it's nothing. You know, nothing to be um speculate. Um, speculate. Now, some people, and it's a valid point to this, but some people believe as though that you know, a veteran, a player that's been with the team for a while, a skilled player, a top player with the team, a leader, that by you showing your face at voluntarily uh, OTAs. Ontario OTAs that kind of shows your leadership, shows your your commitment to the team, commitment to winning, to winning, to you know building a um, you know competitive roster, you know, and there's some truth to that. You know, it's Saints you bringing in a new offense, you bring you bringing in a new system, on um, Clint Kubiak. But my thing is, how serious are you trying to get? In the OTA, you know what I'm saying? Like how how much stuff are you trying to like, you know, unveil in a voluntarily a voluntary OTA that players have to be in? So what's the work? Was it um just because you show your face there? I mean, is it worth it to like injure yourself? You know, a key player to injure themselves during OTAs, something that doesn't even you know you don't have to be at. So, I mean, it's really not a big deal to me, man. You know what I'm saying? Because um, we're going to find out what this team is about going into training camp. You know, that's when things are really going to start to matter. You know what I'm saying? And my, my thing is with the OTAs, injuries. Prevent injuries, man. Do not be out here going hard in these drills, man. You know what I'm saying? So I really don't have a real a big problem with this, man. And I, and I don't really make a big deal out of what is being reported, you know, during OTAs. I'm not knocking about it or cover the team or anything like that, but I'm just saying I'm not going to, like, get excited about what these players do because they're not really doing a lot, man. You know, it's OTAs, man. They're not have the pads on, none of that. They're not, they're not going against opposing teams, you know, so I really don't make a big deal out of this stuff, you know. But I get where people coming from, man. You know, that's, you know, bringing a new, a new offense in, critical year, huge year for Dennis Allen, huge year for Derrick Cole. Key players need to be there. So that's some truth to that, to a certain extent. But in that same token, I rather not. I don't want players need to be come, need to come in and do something to hurt themselves. It just on you know simple drills. Even though they have, they're not doing any contact drills, they could still there's still a risk of them hurting themselves. You know what I'm saying? That could really, you know, set things off the rails. You know what I mean? But um, anyways, man. Um, in regards to the, the training camp, there's some good things that were reported today in the uh, OTAs. Um, one big story, one big hot topic that was a uh, reporter was uh, Trevor Penning at right tackle. 
and they moved uh, Talise Fawaga, the first round pick, over to the left tackle. Now, if you read his scouting report on Fawanga, it is it's reported that he, he played a majority of his snaps, a majority of his career at Oregon State on the right side. And the Saints have done this in the past, man. They've, they're notorious for doing this. You know, they've play take players out of out of a natural bump, natural position and move them to a, another position. They did it with Andrews Pete, did it with Eric McCoy, did it with um Zach Bond. Zach Bond was like an edge rusher at at Wisconsin. They had him playing a, a traditional line linebacker role. You know, but for what I heard is that they like um Fuanga at the left side. That could be the permanent fixture going forward as we go into training camp. That would be this is most likely the setup right here. Left tackle to Lise Fuanga. Right tackle Trevor Penny. Center, Eric McCoy. Right guard, Cesar Ruiz. Left guard, Nick Salvagut Nick Salvaderi, who not now. Salvaderi was a um, draft pick from last season for 2023. He didn't even get on the field last year. And the expectation is that he's going to become the left the left guard if he can continue continue to have a good outing during training camp. There are going to, there are going to be some some veterans that's going to be competing for him, competing with him for that spot. But um, the signs are pointing towards Salvadori being the um, offensive attack, the uh, the left guard. You know, so we have to wait and see how everything plays out. Um, hopefully, Trevor Penning could get it, put it put it together, man. You know, because if he does, if he can he can hold it down, hold it down on the left side, on the right side, um, to what for Wang on the um, no for Wang on the left side, he can hold it down on the right side. Salvadori and um, Ruiz. Man, the, the guard positions. I think you have your um, a good combination going forward. Going forward, everybody's you know still young in the careers, you know entering into their uh, primes. We have a good um, solid combination, you know. Um, no, still no word on Ryan Ramchek uh, on his progress. I was told that from what I read is that he still um, he was at uh, OTAs, but back you know rehabbing his injury, you know. Um, Marshawn Lattimore from corner Dennis Allen he will be a part of this team this season he will be um, playing with the New Orleans Saints this season he shut it down yesterday and talked about it today that he will be, Marshawn Lattimore will be a member of this team so I think that pretty much um, shuts down, down all the trade rumors and all the hypotheticals out there about trading Lattimore for a fifth round pick or trading for a fourth round pick is out of question now. Until, unless they have another dust up. So apparently DA and Lattimore talked things over, cleared things up, and I'm assuming they're good now. Let's hope. You know, unless somebody gets that, unless Loomis gets that phone call making them that, that guy for the type offer. Maybe. But we'll see how it play out, man. But Lattimore, my expectation is that Lattimore will be a part of his team um, after June 1st. You know, so we'll see how everything plays out. Um, quarterback uh, situation, Derek Carr was there. Was solid today. I, play, I believe he completed three or four passes um, during the drills today. Um, Jake Hayner, from what that was a big take, big takeaway from um, the reports, that Jake Hayner was uh, efficient today, played pretty well. Spencer Rattler um, was off to uh, was off to a shaky start, but that's nothing. That's nothing to uh, to worry about. He's a rookie, first time. Who knows how long that's been has been since he you know you know did drills, probably knocking off a little rust. We just gotta, you know, continue to monitor the situation. Um, but this should be expected, though. Uh, Rather, um, not Rather, um, Hayner. 
has been with his off not with his offense. This could the offense that's being installed, but he has been in the league long. He has one year in the league over Spencer Rattles. Is, he's going into his second season. So I would I would expect Jake Hayner to be up to speed on that um on um in OTAs, man. But Rattles still has a lot of time left to, to get things together. Um and heading into the voluntary, the, the mandatory OTAs and on into training camp, which starts in mid, um, in mid July. But I wouldn't really make a big deal out of um, you know Spencer Rattler having his issues today, because there's still a lot of time left to, for him to turn things around. And maybe he is the quarterback of the future. Who knows? But um, I think I just don't expect. I just don't expect um, Spencer Rattler. I'm, I just I just don't expect um, Jake Hayner just to just um, let this guy come in and, and win the job. You know what I'm saying? He may, Hayner may be the guy. Who knows? You know where everybody's you know so dead set on Rattler taking this position, but it may be Hay may be Hayner all alone, all alone. You know, it just depends on how fast these guys are gonna um, learn that offense, gonna pick up those uh the concepts. You know what I'm saying? So we just got to wait to see how it play out um, in, the, in the future. But other than that, man, that was all that was reported today, man. I'm pretty sure there's going to be um, more more topics, more um, news, content reported throughout the week on how the, how the team is progressing through um, uh, voluntary uh, mini camps, but uh, OTAs, but nothing to get really, you know, worked up, man. It's still early in the season. It's super early, you know what I'm saying? It's not even June yet. Um, the real fun is beginning during training camp, you know. And the more, you know, the the more I think we get, we get a good grasp of how this team is, how far it is when it goes into the preseason games, and into those um those drills, those um matchups where they, it's the scrimmages, the the, the, um, the scrimmages. When you play against um, opposing teams, and I think this year they go against uh, the 49ers. They're gonna go up to uh, up to their place and have a session, uh, uh, a session, uh, a scrimmage with the 49ers. And I don't know who the other team is gonna be with, be against. So I can't remember right now, but I know one of those games, those matchups, scrimmage is gonna be against the San Francisco 49ers. So that'd be an easy, uh, a good barometer to see where this offense is at um, as a whole. So we'll see how everything plays out. But other than that, um, that's all I got for y'all for right now. Give me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me know how you feel. Check out sportsview360.com forward slash Saints for this content. New Orleans Saints organization. Follow, follow us on um, Instagram, uh, sportsview360nos. Same as on uh, Facebook as well, sportsview360nos. Have a blessed day. Peace. I'm out. Who that?